down. Okay, Nick Swan now. Puts the key down. 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, and good evening and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. I feel like this one could get a little bit lively. If Twitter's anything to go by anyway. Uh, we're here, of course, to talk about the breaking news in the last couple of hours that Jed Spence has been returned back to uh, Tottenham Hotspur, not by the request of Ange Postacoglu or Spurs, but by Leeds United themselves. Leeds United have cut the loan deal short after... About seven appearances all told, uh, you know, not well, not not seven games worth of football. Obviously, came to Leeds United, came on against Chef Wednesday, then got injured, um, and has then been playing at left back for a couple of games, and then featured at right back against West Brom. But as soon as um, as soon as you know, after that game, Gray was Gray was returned back to right back spot, and I thought it was quite telling that when we got an injury to Byram, he went for Thurpo because I thought he might have gone for Spence. And, yeah, Spence probably scratching his head. Probably Spence wants the move, uh, maybe as well. Maybe it's uh, two parties coming together and saying it's best we just um, part ways. Just going to say, I don't want to um, guess the reason as to why. Um, I don't want to shoot my load until we actually hear from Daniel tomorrow in the presser. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he's got to say on it. And I think... If he doesn't say outright, he'll definitely say in a way which we'll be able to uh, read between the lines to find out what has gone on. But there has been, you know, a little bit said by Farker in the past about Luke Hayling keeping players honest, etc. And um, Jed Spence was mentioned at that time. And, and, and like professors just mentioned in the chat, we also played a million for this lad. This wasn't free. So the fact that we basically lit up a million in effect and said, you know what? We, we could use we could use that loan spot elsewhere. I think that's another thing um, we we have to uh, to consider and think about that the club were willing to um, wipe their hands clean of that. It frees up another loan spot. There was talk, obviously, this morning in the Daily Mail about Leeds having five loan spots available. Whether that increases to six, two. I'm not too sure. Two. No, there's three internationally. Uh, two. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, three internationally, two nationally okay. left. Um, so yeah, there is there is a couple. Uh, I know you've said before, actually, Joe, because I mentioned you this morning in my video. It, it does seem to be that the Daily Mail is the 49ers mouthpiece, doesn't it? But they seem to be getting all the scoops from them. They also seem to have all yeah. the information before anybody else does. If you go back to the start yeah. of the season, it was I think they reported for Arca was the, the the main candidate for job yeah. way before anybody else did. Then they got the sit in on the meeting with the the first time for um, Marat. They met the staff. They got to sit in on that and make notes. And then they brought over to San Francisco to have a little look around and show what the plans are for Ellen Road, which is exciting. But um, yeah, they seem to be yeah. the, the the publication. It's a strange one to pick, but they have definitely picked them. Yeah, definitely. Someone actually responded in the comments on my last video to say the Daily Mail is actually in America, and they get a lot of the phone. I don't know if that's actually they true. Owned by the, guys... are they owned by the New York Times. They own a ton of newspapers it's, or something like potentially, that. Potentially, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. But um, they seem to be getting all the right stuff. Someone's just mentioned great panel as well. Big up uh, to you, mate. Happy birthday for yesterday. Lockie will be joining us a little bit later on as well. He's just doing a bit of uni work. Um, Liam Moore says, Spen lo Spence loan cancelled and Jura shaved. I don't know what's real anymore. Crazy times. I know. Me and Luke were just saying off air we preferred him with the beard and asked him to grow it back regardless of Hang on, hang on. I said I preferred him with the beard. I said I like him. I like him. Oh, anyway. I preferred him. Yeah. I preferred him. I, pre I preferred him with the beard. <laughs> um, we'll get Jess on and ask what she prefers. I don't know. Maybe she'll tell us. Maybe not. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell her before I did it, so there was a reaction. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, so listen, folks. Jed Spence come back. Luke, we'll come to you. What are your initial thoughts? Were you, I was shocked. I was shocked. I can't lie. Yeah, I think I think I think it came as a shock. I, I I didn't expect as to to offload anybody in terms of who, who we've got in on loan. Um, anybody, the only person I expected realistically to believe in this window was um, bef before the rumours started around Cresswell and and, and Aileen, was Willie Nonto. 
Um, mm-hmm. And that was if a, if, a, if a good enough offer came in. So when when I obviously seen that um, that Jed Spence had been returned, I, I, yeah, like you, I, w- I was I was shocked, but but I wasn't upset. I wasn't angry because I don't think he's shown or offered enough to us in in the seven opportunities he's had. Because no. dress it up however you like, he's had seven opportunities to impress and do the things. Arguably for me, the best. Of, Appearance he had was his ten minute cameo against Chef Wednesday when he made when he tracked back, um, yeah. and that was that that's 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 the only memory I've got of his time here, which which sort of speaks volumes in itself. Um, could he be a good player in the right system? Absolutely. Look, he's a technically a good, a good footballer, but again, we're, we're going to probably come on to it a little bit later around around the reasons why we think personally as to why as to why he he's gone back, but mm. but. but it's certainly not due to his footballing ability. We've seen he can do it at Forest, um, but but why have none of these teams signed him permanently? You know, there's, yeah, there's a question yeah. mark, and yeah. and so for me, yeah, absolutely was shocked, but upset. No, not not in the no. slightest. No, I, I'm with you, mate. And I genuinely asked on Twitter what people had seen in the games, and I know a lot of people will say, "Well, hang on a minute, he's not played in his preferred position." And I know it's only a handful of games, right? And and you can respond. But this wasn't... I wasn't trying to fish. I was genuinely asking, are we going to be missing anything? Because my response to that, if I'm talking to myself in an echo chamber, I said, no, I don't think we're going to miss anything. I'm not saying that Jed Spence is poor. Definitely not. I was as excited as anybody when he was linked and came in. Best right back in the league. I've said it myself. But when you actually sit back and look at it, the last time he played to a decent level was at Nottingham Forest, which was nearly two years ago now. Since then, he went to Spurs, didn't work out. He went to Wren, played seven times, came to Leeds United and played around about the rough rough amount of games. So you have to question whether or not, um, you know, he's he's up to the level that he once was at For- Forest. I, d- I don't know because, you know... He's clearly, for whatever reason, not worked out here. Um, and that, listen, the the true test or the true proof in the pudding is that he's playing grey there. So that tells you what Farker, and he's the manager, folks, what Farker thinks of Jed Spence. Um, Joe, I'll come to you. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I didn't mind Jed Spence at all, really. I didn't think he did anything wrong. Um in terms of when he did play, he's barely he's barely played in his natural position, which is right back. He's done a job for mm-hmm. us at the left, and I thought he was fine in both the games he played in the left. There were reasons you could be nervous in playing there because he's very left footed and he turns his body in a weird position that leaves the flank open. But he always covered himself quite well. I think Eve used one that said before he has a very good talent for when he does lose the ball, winning it back pretty much straight away. I thought he was fine. I was actually looking forward to seeing him get a good run. And I, I, funnily enough, I hadn't read anything into him being on the bench um, against Birmingham because I knew Farrakhan was managing his minutes. So when I saw him on the bench, I just thought, short amount of games, he started the last two. He's taking him out, make sure he doesn't get any injuries. And then when the change came on, it was like, may as well give Farrakhan the minutes and again, just manage his minutes. That's what I assumed was going on. I didn't read anything uh, strange into it. So when I saw it tonight, I was, I was very shocked at it. Um, I, I think we are possibly going to miss something on the right-hand side, but it's it's more of a warm body than anything else because if Archie picks up a knock, if anything happens, you're back to Bill then. You know, we saw what that was like at the start of the season. You'd imagine Aiden will play against Peterborough now. Um, you would hope Leeds are looking at bringing in a right-back. There's been a couple of right-backs linked with Leeds, but nobody of any massive kind of pedigree. So, it's yeah, it's strange at the moment, but um, as you said before we came on, I'm sure Daniel Farrak will give us some indication tomorrow at least in this tone, if it's positive or negative. Yep. Yep. Um, no backtracking. No backtracking. Uh, let me just qual- qualify this. Yes, I did say this. I'm not I'm not hiding from it. I, I did say this. I also said he'd be the best right, right back in the league. But when he's come to the football club, he's not. And Daniel Farker, for whatever reason, has chose to go with Gray. It's nothing to do with me backtracking. Um, I will always, if I believe in the manager, believe in his decisions as well. And Daniel Farker, for whatever reason, yet to be revealed, has said, Spence, you're going back. And I, and I think it's quite an indictment that he only has Luke Aylin and Shackleton and Gray as potential right-backs, and he's willing to send him back. You read into that what you will. 
There's no backtracking here. I'm just saying he's clearly not fulfilled the potential that we all thought we were getting. That's there. Like, everyone, well, he hasn't played there. Well, why hasn't he played there would be my question. But there's some there are some circumstances around that. Like the, he was injured for a big chunk of time yep. and actually got the position and he doesn't drop players that are playing well and actually he's done fine at right back. So he had to earn his way back into the team. When he got his chance, he went in at right back and then straight away we have an issue at left back and he has to switch across to the far side straight away. I don't I don't think it was anything to do with ability that he wasn't playing at right back. I think a lot of it was down to circumstances and you know at least so why isn't he still injured though? Why well, we have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. It could be it could be something else. The player himself might be told by his agent there's an offer to go and play for another club permanently. He want, might want Fair. to go there, so he might have gone to Daniel Farrak and said, "I want to go back." Leeds have cancelled the deal. He's gone back because Farrak did say before, "If you don't want to be here, you, you'll go back. You'll go wherever you want to go." Yeah. It could be yeah. something like that. It could be nothing. It could be it could be a bad attitude. It might not be a bad attitude. I wouldn't speculate anything right now because we we no, really fair, really don't fair. know. Before we start tarnishing the guy's character, we should be a little careful. We don't have mm. all the information. Yeah, no, that's fair. I think that is fair, mate, to, to, to do. Uh, Jamie's got a point as well. I remember people massively hammering Rotten last season with limited game time. I was one of them as well, 100%. Don't hide away from that fact. Lockie, thoughts on uh, on the Spence surprised as us? Yeah, <laughs> when group chat where it happened, you were lagging, Joe. You were like, you, you were... Yeah, I was away. behind. <laughs> I was busy, man. I was busy, and then I was like, what? Yeah, well, middle of my work and then suddenly that just stumbles it wild mm. um yeah i don't know where it came from but i guess i think when you sign a player like that and let's be real and we're all saying and no one's saying he wasn't an excellent footballer he is an excellent footballer his ability is brilliant he did it in this league two seasons ago and was unbelievable yeah. but but yeah. once he left that and went to spurs he didn't reach the level he did in that championship season he didn't Otherwise, he wouldn't be with us on loan. He wouldn't have been on loan. He'd have been in the Premier League tearing up. And he isn't there, and he should have been. That was the trajectory. So I think, for whatever reason, look, again, I'm not going to speculate either. I don't think that's fair. I think this, you could argue anything, but we'll find out at the end of the day. Um, but he's not at the level we thought he was going to be. Mm. Whether he's, that's because of circumstance, yes. It, that injury didn't help at all, let's be honest. <laughs> if you want injured, if there's an argument, he'd still be here, let's be honest. But... But maybe there's another target that Leeds think can get in quicker and, and affect the team differently. Maybe, you know, maybe again, Jed Spence wasn't happy with the game time. Maybe he wants to start and he had a, he thought he had a right to do that. And that's that's on him. That's fair enough. But for whatever reason, it's not worked. He's not played consistently. And and Daniel Farker prefers Archie Gray in that position. Yeah. And maybe Jed wasn't happy with that and he's in the right to do so. He's, he's already destroyed this league once. He thinks he can play more. At another club, mm. and maybe you will. So yeah, it's a mess in it. I don't. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think the Jed Spence wanting to leave really washes with me because we we, no, we paid it, a million quid to bring to bring yeah, yeah. to bring this lad in. Yeah. And financially, it doesn't it doesn't make sense? We've paid for him to the end no. of the season, even if we just let him play in the twenty ones or, or sit on the bench yeah. for a million quid that we've paid. Surely we'd just do that, whether he wants to be here or not. Look, you don't want a bad apple around the team, uh, and I'm not suggesting in any way that he's a bad apple or has been a bad apple. There's been rumours about his 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 attitude in the past at previous clubs and things. I think, but yeah. but but not. I'm not necessarily going to sort of tarnish his whole career and and, and his time with us, with particularly with that. And so, but but if that is the case, that that he you know he wanted to go, that has to be the he only reason. Yeah, no, he, no, he, he hasn't. He, We've released him. Back. So we paid yeah. a million quid for seven games, and it works out. I think somebody said in the chat about five and a half grand. You're muted, Joe. You're muted. Sorry, mate. Joe, you're muted, mate. You just I, I wasn't saying the player has asked to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not on about you. I don't think it's on about you, bro. No, no, no I was just didn't make the point no. of it could be anything from a scale of the player himself. Yeah. Going to attitude yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Middle, you know. At, at the end of the day, he's not playing as much as he, he'd want. It's far could have want as we want. And yeah, yeah. That's the situation, right? But, but yeah, it's, and it's I think... interesting because you look at Anthony and the other end of it, who's hardly featured, exactly. and he's still here. And so he's I, still here. I, yeah. I don't know. And Daniel Park has come out today, on and record and said he's not going anywhere. I've heard a rumour today that he is, I, but I can't tell you where from. I've heard a rumour that Anthony... Oh dear, no, no, no. <laughs> to, be, yeah, to be honest, mate, I heard a rumour back in fucking October. They're all going. <laughs> I've heard another one today. I've heard another one today. I don't know how true it is. And you can never, you know, yeah, I take these things with a pinch yeah. of salt, which is why I generally don't don't bring them up. But, um, but yeah, no, but, 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 even 
if, if his attitude was fine and he wasn't a bad apple and he was willing to push and he was going to, you know, make our right back in Archie Gray play better to keep his position, there's no reason you wouldn't keep Jed Spence here till the end of the season because we've paid that, that fee for him, simply, quite, just simply because of that. Yeah, that's no, why I don't 100%. understand. Yeah, there's clearly something's happened because, like you said, we've thrown a million down the Swanee. Whereas at the end of the day, had he been willing to sit on the bench and fight for his place, why would the club reduce their options in that position and lose a million quid? There has to be something, something underlying underneath it. Of course, we're guessing, but it ain't just a case of we've gone, ah, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? We'll send him back. There's... Something has to have happened. You would hope there is a, a there is somebody lined up to come in. Contingency there, yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there will be a contingency plan, lads? With um, because we've been linked to it. What one, two? I'm just counting the names that have popped up. You've got Connor Price Roberts has been linked on well. it from Burnley. Yeah, Trey Hume from Sunderland was linked. Connor Bradley from from Liverpool was linked as well, and Sam Curtis the same Pats. But Sam Curtis wouldn't go into the championship. He'd be he's not ready for that. Yeah. Mm. Connor Bradley is potential. It's not proven at this level, but it's a bag of potential. He's a very exciting player. Uh, also, Samuel Leeds were linked to him twice already last season and this season. So there's a possibility there. Very similar to very plays a very similar style that Farka would like. Um, and then Trey Hume at Sunderland, but I don't think Sunderland are gonna let players go at this point because they're pushing for the playoffs. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, EB, you've just joined us. I know you were disappointed he didn't start at the weekend. Now you must be even more disappointed to find that he's not even at the club anymore. The irony is, is I'm not. I'm oh, actually okay. strangely excited by this now. Um, because for me, I think this means we're going to be in for an exciting January. I think that there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of movement, probably mm -hmm. a lot more than we've been led to believe so far. I think that no matter no matter how good, I think we built Jed Spence up into yeah. being this savior that he hasn't been, or at least hasn't been given the opportunity to be. But if the 49ers are going to make shockwaves and kind of propellers into the second half of the season, then what better way to, to do it than pull the rug from under us, you know, halfway through a day with no warning, absolutely nothing. And if he's not the guy for the manager, you have to give the manager the tools that he says that he requires. And if he says that Jed Spence is not the man for him, we have to put faith in him and what better way than doing it that at the beginning of a transfer window instead of Agreed. him realizing you know the maybe the 25th of january that he's not the right person attitude maybe and I, it annoys me when people just throw this attitude like whenever a player doesn't work at what whatever club that he's in attitude seems to miraculously be the the issue um but he didn't get it and you know how we were talking about last night how luke and and coops get it you know they are leads and it's different difficult to get that from a um a lone player but rodon gets it for me so White got it exactly you you can get it and i just haven't got that he's got it so for me it's no great disappointment because we've not really if rodon left we would be gutted and to be honest yeah. i think we would suffer massively you know we don't win half of the games that we've won this season without Rodon in the team but we haven't seen Spence so therefore we've not come to rely on him so for me I don't see it as a massive loss it's a massive loss of potential but not an actual loss to the team right now yeah. in my opinion yeah, can I just can I just say it as well? I'm seeing something, yeah. and I don't agree with this person. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. I've seen people say he was lazy and stuff. I think that's a lot of rubbish. If I'm being honest, Does that, I don't think he was is... remotely lazy in any way, shape, or form. I'm not, I'm not sure. Let me really clarify. On the pitch, a... what we see of him, I don't think he was at all. Yeah, there seems to be there seems to be a narrative being Personally. being touted because he's gone back there. You know, oh, we're better off without him, or it's us against no. him, and it's, it's a very it's it's not necessarily here, Joe, but online. It seems a very strange oh, yeah. reaction to a player the club have sent back for an element of our fan base to kind of be attacking him a little bit to talk about again going back to you know 
talking about his potential character without having any facts at all in, in the situation, you know, oh, well, so-and-so said back on another channel or on another team he played for whenever. There's no evidence from what he's done on the pitch for Leeds to suggest he had a bad attitude or was lazy. Any game he played for Leeds, he was fine and he didn't have a bad game. He was at his worst for he has played in the handful. Mm. And it's just over one literal handful of matches that he played. You know, there's very little evidence to suggest there was a bad attitude there or there was any problems with him at all. Also, we're not, of course, we're not going to miss him. But we also don't know if he got it or not because he's only played seven games. You know, Joe Rodon's played 20 yeah. odd games this season. Ben White had an entire season at Leeds before we made that decision on him. You know, these Just are players that played a lot of games. He's had seven the, matches, though. We don't really the know. Seven we, the seven matches he played in, we only won two of, and we've won 11 of the 15. He has a, he, he didn't feature. But at no point, Luke, and that's fair, but at no point has anyone ever picked. Jed Spence out as being the fault for any of the defeats in those games. No one at any stage has said, well, Jed Spence was bad in that game and that's why we lost that match. It hasn't been said. It just it hasn't been said at all. And, no. you know, now all of a sudden he's a bad player and, he, you know, we were going to win the league with him. Well, we, we might have. We might have, but we won't, we'll, we'll never know now because he's gone back and we never really mm. got to see him play in his natural position for any prolonged period of time. I think he played, what, two matches? A right back, one start, one off the bench, and the rest of them were left. I line. think it was even. I think it was even. I think he played a couple. So yeah, three, three seven. ish each. I mean, that's not a sample pool to decide whether a player was a good player or no. whether he got leads or not. I don't. No, but I think I think that is a big enough sample size to, to determine whether or not he's right for this system and, and us. Yeah, I do. And I think that's to play over great. Yeah, to play over great. Look at it. Yeah. No, yeah, it's not going to work. That's that's absolutely fair. But I, but again, I, I just be careful about what we're saying about the person here and, and about speculating the reasons because there, there are no facts out there yet about this and it is pure yeah. speculation at this point you know 100% yeah, I wouldn't that's all like five percent of what I've read on Twitter from sources or no what was the thing mm. about Luke Ayling that I've seen in a chat I don't yeah know somebody... yeah so so this is something that's been on record as as being said but again this is um this is this is from Rocco Dean. Rocco's been on this very show on the final word. Rocco Dean does a daily or weekly uh, email, a bit like the square ball do with, with Moscow, right? You get an email, and in Rocco's, it's been evidenced before that Daniel Farker spoke about Luke Ayling's leadership qualities and said on a number of occasions, Luke has had to keep Jed sped on it, Spence honest, i.e. come on, Jed, Put the work in. That's what meaning honest. I've got to keep you honest while you're doing your work, right? It's a, it's a turn of phrase. Got to keep you on beat. That necessarily isn't such a bad thing. That's a good quality for Luke. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that it's out there in the ether says that he needs motivation. But that doesn't make him a bad apple because some players need motivating more than others. You we know, also we also don't know just, if that doesn't apply to other players because we've talked see we've seen before yeah. about Bamford working with Rudder and there seems to be very yeah. much a senior player junior player partnerships to help the younger players to develop. So again, that's said out of context. That could just be something that he has for all of his players. That there are certain young players who have an older player that keeps them honest because players cut corners in training. Like we we've all done them when we've trained. If it can not sprint as much as I have to, I won't. If it can. Mm dodge a couple of burpees or dodge a couple of burpees like you know players people will try and cook on so you have that senior pro to, to keep you honest to make sure you finish and do the work it yeah. is about doing the work but again people will always cook corners if they get a chance to cook corners so having those whilst i players, yeah. whilst i agree about the the whole the whole we shouldn't you know we, we can't judge a character when we don't when we don't know the answer whilst i completely agree about that there's all for me there's no smoke without fire and it's and it has been documented at a number of clubs and yeah. there's a reason Notts Forest didn't sign him when they went up or tried to sign him yeah, you know he went out to Renzi had an absolute awful time out in France um so there's the, 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 there is the, I mean when you when you put the bit pieces of the jigsaw together there is there is an obvious denominator isn't that now whilst we're still speculating because it isn't it isn't it isn't a, it isn't a factual denominator which it's still we don't hear these rumors about dan james we don't hear these rumors about archie gray we don't hear these rumors about anybody else do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's yeah I, I agree but it's like <sighs> or would we if they were leaving i don't know no 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 you're right. uh, everyone you're right. develops in like different times, different ways. You know, we've all got problems. We've all, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I was terrible at training. I just moaned all the time. I complained. <laughs> That's the way I am. I'm different now. I've learned. I've grown from that. Right. I'm older than him. You know, he's at that stage now. Maybe where you know he has to go through that. Calvin Phillips is a good example. 
at Bielsa, you know, he was overweight when he came into training. When he, the amount of weight that uh, Phillips had to lose to become the player he needed to be. Maybe it's just a little thing for Jed Spence, you know. He's... Tony Yeboah, like, like he was yeah, a so horrendous weird. George Graham sold him because he wouldn't train properly. <laughs> yeah. And what it's just, player, though? yeah, it's sometimes people just need to, you know, take time to just think about things because at the end of the day, he's not at where he should be considering the season he had at Nottingham Forest. So obviously, the, it's not gone perfectly, whether that's mentality, whether that's your personal life, whether that's you as a player, you don't feel right every day at training. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons for it. Let me just, just sorry. And because I don't want people to like misquote or anything, it's but yeah, yeah. it's hard as a, a t when you're at that elite level, if you drop in anywhere mentally, physically by one, two percent, you can see yourself dropping and you're trying always to find that extra percent to get you to the player you used to be because he's an excellent player, he's, he's really talented. Yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely fair enough to, to say. Here's something though, right? And I know none of us were saying this before, but and it's easy with hindsight to say this now, right? But that we could we come back to that that conversation that that we 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 haven't got the spence that we were thought we were getting at the end of the at the end of the day we all thought we were getting the best right back in the championship. Having a look at his career, um, he spent one two three like six seasons at Middlesbrough, five seasons. Um, then went to Forest, had one amazing season. Then went to Spurs, then went to Rennes, and then been at Leeds. So is that amazing season at Forest the outlier and the rest is the, the norm? Do you know what I mean? Because prior to his move to Forest, he, he, he wasn't doing anything at Middlesbrough. And that's, and that's under that's, several managers, not that's just the under one. Right? To try and figure out yeah. what went well that year and how he can replicate that to become the player he can be. Because that's the yeah. peak. That's He showed he can be that. So now he's maybe just struggling to find what that was. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon that maybe, obviously, we've I think the whole team at this at one point or another have been guilty of this, but believing their own hype, and maybe because he had had such a good season with Forest, and then because we were crying out for a right back with Ailing obviously performing below the standard that we need in order to get promoted, that he was obviously came in under the well not under the illusion, but he was going to be a starter straight away in the team and obviously got injured. And then, you know, Archie did a did a good job at right back. And obviously Archie has a has a very good professional attitude from from being in in and around the first team from such a young age that maybe Jed Spence kind of believed his own hype and therefore um didn't not saying that he didn't train as hard or he didn't try as hard. But maybe there was just that lack of hunger that, for instance, Archie Gray, you know, Rodon has, Ampadu has, just that hunger to to play and that hunger to be in the game, especially like Jorginho, you know, he's got that hunger, you know, he wants to be out there and playing and maybe Jed has been kind of the victim of his own hype to a certain extent and maybe the two personalities of Farker being very humble has maybe clashed with the expectation and um, sense of entitlement that potentially, not saying he has it, but potentially Jed Spence could have. If, if that was the case, and assume that's, that's, that is the case and that's the correct answer, Everything Daniel Farkas said in the summer would mean Jed Spence wouldn't be in any of the squads. But he has made all of the squads. The fact he's dropped Luke Ayling from the squads to put Jed Spence in the squad. So if Jed Spence had done any of those things in training, he wouldn't be in the squad. We saw it with Nanto and Farkas said, if you don't do it in training, you won't be here. Yeah. They have to train like it's a Champions League final. They've got to be at that level. He said that continuously. He keeps saying that. So it wouldn't make any sense for him to hold other players to that standard to drop a player like Luke Ayling, who he talks incredibly highly about every time he talks about Luke Ayling, and put a player who isn't isn't giving it all in training or isn't uh, hasn't the best attitude into into the squad. That that wouldn't line up with Farka's logic to this point of the season. That that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I I, I get that, and I to be honest, I agree. Um, my only question is is that we have had a slip in certain games where players have 
whether they've meant to or not, whether it's been subconsciously done or not, but they've walked onto the pitch believing that they've already won the game. So we know that there is that with within the squad to do that. So I'm not necessarily singling Jed Spence out, but obviously Ampadu, for instance, has been in the squad, has played every single minute bar a couple, you know, and he has had a dip in form, but it doesn't mean he doesn't give everything on the pitch. And he has, within this season, quite a lot of credit um, to his name so that we forgive him when he does have poor games. Whereas, obviously, Jed Spence, through injury and through Farker's um, team selection, hasn't necessarily had the chance to build up credit. And with us all being, with this being a, a system, um, with this being a season that is a standout season, you know, a, a season to never have been before with having two teams so um, extraordinary as Ipswich and Leicester, maybe he's having to do things that he wouldn't necessarily do because the weight of the expectation of us getting back up is so severe that they're having to make decisions that maybe he wouldn't have made if it was a normal season because he would have time to maybe work on that you know with Spence whereas you know there's a lot on the line for everybody players money the manager you know we you know I said the other day I thought he had job security for the season but we don't know what goes on behind the scenes we don't know what promises have been made expectations have been raised um throughout the beginning of the season when we proved that we could beat Ipswich and 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 go toe to toe with all of the top teams kind of thing. So I'm not trying to single out Spence, but I'm just saying it's within that squad that we have had games where they've walked onto the pitch believing, you know, or in my eyes, believing that we've won the game. I'd like to think <clears throat> it's the second part of what you said there. I'd like to think, and I would be to what you said earlier on, I would be excited to think that this is Farka looking at it and go, I just need better there. And I can get better there. Yeah. So let's go get better there. I think we said at the start of the season as well that the general feeling around the place was if Leeds were within swinging distance of automatic promotion come January, they'd throw the kitchen sink at it to, you know, to make sure Leeds are within swinging distance of the of the automatic spots. The, the article in the Daily Mail today talked about a heavy reinvestment package should Leeds get promoted. So they're going to throw money at the Premier League again to make sure Leeds stay there as well. So it doesn't appear to be this this thing in the in them that you know we'll we'll, we'll scrape this or we'll go what we have it just seems to be a look of and i hope this is the case let's get the best players we can get in where we can get them and when we can get them and if it is that case then i'm really excited about what january could actually bring to, to what you said earlier on Edie. and i hope that that's all that that's what it is yeah yeah too. i think i think it's put listen we have to we have to give balance to the argument we can all sit here and say oh you know, let's not cast aspersions and all that sort of stuff, which I think is fair. And, and I hate to quote this man because we don't like him, but Neil Warnock did once say when he was at Middlesbrough, he had the talent to play in the Premier League, but that his dedication to the game could see him play non-league football in five years' time. That's what he said, that he's on record as saying that. Hence why Spence did the cigar tweet when Forrest got promoted. So, listen, some footballers see it as a job. You, you, you've you only to look at, say, every. Uh, listen, I watch a lot of podcasts and a lot of people talk about Ravel Morrison as being the boy. Like, he was the player. He was at Manchester United. He went over to Lazio and all this. Now, where is he? Well, he didn't have the application or the attitude to achieve what he was supposed to achieve. And you look at people like, even if we compare Rooney and Ronaldo, people said Rooney could have been that, but never had the the application or the attitude or the want to be. Yes, he lived and breathed football, but if you look at Ronaldo in comparison, he's an athlete. He dedicated his life to it. You know, he's in bloody, he's got bloody chronic, what, I don't know what they call, but like ice chambers in his house where he sat there trying to prolong his career that little bit and Rooney's getting smacked about by Phil Bardsley in his bloody kitchen on an <laughs> evening. Do you know what I mean, though? This is the difference, and this is what it takes. Listen, I'm, I didn't play to any level. I played for my district, but the dedication these footballers must have to have any sort of length, longevity in the game, and if you ain't there, then there will be someone who's young and hungry, like an Archie Gray, who's 17-year-old, whose whole family is steeped in football history, whose granddad and dad will be saying, you do this, you do this, you do this, mm -hmm. that, that 
he will be putting every single ounce of his being into that training, into the games that he's played. Hence why Farkas said, boom, you're, you're my man. So we'll, we, we will have to wait and see what happens. But just moving on from Spence now, we do only have Shackleton, Gray and Luke Ayling. Does this scupper a move for Luke Ayling to Middlesbrough? I think this could be another byproduct or another reason as to why this has been done. Because I think he could then stay as an option. Joe, you shaking your head? Is not the is that not the right way to go? Do we need to go and get a right back? I think you do now, yeah. Because it was identified at the start of the season when Luke Ayling was there and was doing very well in preseason, had a very good preseason. Um, and but we're talking about the numbers he was putting in, where the numbers he was putting in when Bielsa was in charge, you know. So we were say, we were all talking about the, the, the preseason and gone back to basics with him, and we then saw the performances. And again, I love Luke Ayling. I hate saying this out loud because he's one of my favorite players of the last 15, 20 years. I love the guy. Um, but his performance level wasn't where it should have been. So being as that was the case at the start of the season, Leeds go out and get a what they believe to be the best right back in the league, and Jed Spence, and they bring him in. That that conversation hasn't changed nothing has changed since then except the fact that we've seen Luke Ayling play four or five games back to back at the start of the year and not be very good in that position anymore or the legs be going a little bit so that shouldn't change the situation that should reinforce that point that should mean Leeds are looking at it going no we have to go now and get it right back in and they've been linked with a few like so there's, there's clearly some smoke there like they are looking at fullbacks maybe we, maybe in the whole process of looking for a left back they've identified a right back as well that they think is a better long term option as well and um, you know so there was no option in Jed Spence's contract in the in the, the loan deal. Maybe Leeds looked at whatever the potential fee could have been as being not a fair fee. So they've looked at another target and, and gone that way. So I don't think it changes the situation at all. I think it should be it stays exactly the same way. But now you've got a situation where you need to get a right back and a left back. And going to the loan market is fine, but you do have potential issues with loan players if it's not going our way. It's not their club. They won't be here next year. You know, and you've got to put that into thought process as well. If you're up the top and where it's going well, they're great. But if it's not going so well, long players can switch off. Yeah, that's fair. Lucky. Um, go on, Luke. Count Byram as a, a as a backup at right back as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. Yeah, if, you, if you buy a left back, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, when you look at it that way, I mean, I, I, arguably, you probably want between five and six wing back or full backs that can play either side. And uh, counting that, including Furpo, say Ailing goes, we've got. Furpo, Byram, Shaq, Gray, Ailing. That's it currently. Now with Jed Spence leaving. So we would have had six. Jed Spence goes, Ailing goes. Then we, 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 we certainly need another expected. one at least Furpo one or two, don't we? To go as well. That's one more off that list as well. Maybe maybe Furpo's staying. Maybe that decision has changed. Maybe they're going to yeah. keep hold of Furpo. So now, and, they're, and they're happy with what they saw against Birmingham, which really isn't isn't the example they're hoping for the base the entire season on. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm just reading some some news articles here. Apparently, that Graham Bailey's been chatting beans, talking about Charlie Charlie Taylor coming back. That's not happening by any stretch of the imagination. He yeah. plays nearly every single game for Burnley. This guy chats so much beans; it is unbelievable. What was the chance at the start of the season when he wasn't? Yeah, no, not now. Yourself, no, 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 definitely not now. As I say, Charlie Taylor is staying put at Burnley. Um, don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, but. Um, obviously, Lockie, we're going to talk about um, fullbacks tomorrow in uh, the uh, scouting report, right backs and left backs. But do, do, could there be a situation where we get someone that can cover both, or is that too much of a speciality? Do they even exist? Um, I mean, yeah, but I mean, Chad Spence did both, didn't it? So, because, yeah. <laughs> um, I think Not we need a well. specialist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got, we've got. <laughs> We've got Byron who can do that, aren't we? Really, so he's kind of that one there. Yeah, just get get a right back. No, yeah. <laughs> one's gone out. Get one in. Let's not complicate it. Get a good one. I like, I like Conor. I'm not convinced we'll go get one. You know, I'm not convinced we'll go get we one. We will. You know, get a left back. No right back. Should I get a left back and move, right back this year. move Byron to right play. back potentially? Like Andres. I think Gray will play right back for the remainder of the season. Yeah. It's a very strong possibility, Joe. I think there's a very strong case there. I, I quite liked Shaq playing right back at the start of the year when I saw him playing there a couple of times. He was very, very good, especially getting forward. When Byron wasn't there, Shaq was a very good backup. 
maybe he's looking at the other options he has and he's thinking, what's the point in doing it now? We've got enough to get us where we need to get to. Maybe it's a, I, I, I hope it's not the four shot. I hope it's not the number nine. I hope it's not the number 10. You know, the crutch every year when we get to this stage, we're like, if we just do this one, then we'll, that's the push we need. And then we don't do it and we leave ourselves short at the end of the season. I just hope that this isn't that one. Can I, can I, because everyone's saying that's just stupid and that, right? Can I put to you guys and to the crowd that are watching, what I would say, right, is what has Archie done that that convinces you Jed Spence would have been better? Like, everyone keeps telling me, right? Everyone keeps telling me, and everyone keeps going on about, oh, we need to play Spencer, we need to play Spencer. You can't play Archie there, you can't play Archie there. Aside from Jack Clark and Liam Miller, just one second, Evie, let me land, but you can respond. Jack Clark for 45 minutes... And Liam Miller won full game. The, there's nothing Archie's done. Archie, Archie has played fine at ref right back. Uh, Av, I'm not going to allow you to say this confidence thing because that's just BS. I don't know where that even comes from. If that's going to be your response, so you, that you've got to come with something else. Um, there's there's nothing. There is nothing that Archie can't do that Spence has been able to do. Right? Like Jody, you're telling me Spence, Spence won multiple awards. Okay, what? Like, yeah, 20 months ago, not not in this side. We're talking about now. We're talking about now. I do not want to change the whole makeup of Leeds United to accommodate for a guy that had one good season in about 10. Archie Gray has come, and I'm not saying he's a bad player, but I'm just trying to tell you where my head's at. Archie Gray has come and been, for me, almost faultless. Almost faultless. On Evie, you sat there like this. Go on, Luke. You had before Evie yeah, shoots go us on. down. <laughs> but, 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 I, I, this is what I don't understand about our fan base. Um, they've been telling me that Jed Spence is the best right back or, or the best right back. I think somebody said in ten years in in the league. Um, and they're basing it on Forest two seasons ago. His season yeah, at Forest, he's one yeah, outstanding yeah. season. Now since then. He went to went to France and played at Rennes, and this this is his, this is a report I read earlier about his time in, in Rennes. It's been rather a grim start to life abroad for Spence, as he's seemingly been unable to settle at his new club. Um, it's something along the lines he got a so three out of ten. Dog. Someone's dog crying. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's dog's crying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, they basically give him a three out of ten. Catastrophic. They they, they rated him. Um, yeah. I mean, and that's more recent than his time out. Why aren't they relating to this information rather than his time at Forest? You know, and and the, look, he's not a bad player. I think the problem we had is the expectation way out, outweighed the reality. And I think because he had that great season, and we were all buzzing to get him in, we'd paid him from paid for him to come from Spurs. The expectation just didn't simply didn't match up, and yeah. and and ultimately, he's he's not been as good as as, as Archie Gray in that position. Is it Jer? Is it you, Jer? I've muted you, Jer. No, it's not you. Whose dog's bloody crying like that? It must be Luke saying. It must be Luke. I think he's gone too far. Right, Evie John says I'm talking crap. We'll go watch something else. You bellend. But I would. <laughs> just about Craig. You don't even speak. Craig did play in our big streak of wins as well at right back, so he's not been bad. Yeah, and, and can we just qualify? But Luke, me, whoever, no one is saying Spence is a, good, a bad player. Spence came in, we expected the world, and, and we didn't get that. And now we're like, okay, right, it's fine. He's gone back. There will be a reason as to why he's gone back. It's fine. But. The response from those that are saying it's a mad decision, it's the wrong decision, it's this, it's that. I ask you why, based on what? I would say based we just don't know what? yet. I'd hold we off on, on exactly, bro. Point. You can't, and this is my point. Joe, if he'd have been plucked from obscurity, no one would be thinking they're, they're dining out on his good season again. That's the anomaly. That is the anomaly, folks. That's not the norm, and that's what we expected, myself included. And people are saying, when, he, when, when was it? Joe, just something. But when he, when, when people say, when was he given the chance? Well, there's a reason he hasn't been given the chance. That's if, that's. Go on. If if he hadn't have gone back today, nobody would be having any conversation about Jed Spence's performances for Leeds. Nobody would be saying a word online today about an attitude. Nobody would be saying a word a word about him being the best or worst right back in the league. There was again. I say it again. There was no data. There's time at Leeds to suggest any of the stuff that's being said about him this season. He'd be on the bench, Joe. 
He's been on the bench, yeah, but he's been in the squad. He hasn't been training on his own. And Farka said, if, if your attitude's not right, you won't train with us. So, again, say, I completely respect everything you said about his time in France, Luke, and that, that was criticism based on his time in France, based on his time at Leeds, based on the games he has been available for and the performances he's put in while he has been there. I don't see any reason for anybody to be having a pop at the guy in any way or also saying he's the best in the world. He's been fine. Not great, yeah. not crap. He's been fine yeah. for Leeds. You could also argue the case that he hasn't had a chance really to get a run at this. He's only started to come into the team, and you really could look at judging him in 10 or 15 games. But he hasn't got that opportunity, and he goes back. And that's just the way it is. Move on. The only thing you can... Won. The only thing Evie. you can analyze... Evie will get a moment. Evie right, will this, get a moment. This is, this is really quick. The only thing you could say is uh, he prefers Archie Gray. And why is that? That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's prefers the Archie point Gray I to, make. So. Um, Evie, before we come to you, Luke just wants to respond to our man Jordan. Go on, Luke. Yeah, just really quickly. It keeps telling me I've got a fucking agenda. Um, I, the the only agenda is that is is one that you've got. You told me you won Player of the Season at Forest. He didn't. Yates did. So who's got the agenda? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he's come with facts. He's come with facts and stats. City, oh. <laughs> City. He said, City. Go on then, Evie. Go. <laughs> right. First of all, the argument's redundant. He's gone. So it's a pointless discussion anyway because he's gone. But what I would say is that he wasn't actually given any sort of a chance, right? And your same argument for starting Archie Gray at right back is the same argument that you've been going against with the Jorginho Rutter and Pirro argument with wanting Jorginho to play in the 10. He is Ooh. stubborn. Fark is stubborn, right? right? We've all been screaming at him to play Jorginho in the 10 and play um, Piro, Bamford, insert striker here kind of thing. Right. So we know yeah. that he's stubborn and we know that his stubbornness has cost us games. So by that logic, we don't know how Spence would have performed in those games because, like Lockie just said, he prefers Archie Gray. Does that Why? mean that because that's how he prefers it? Just because he prefers something doesn't mean that it's necessarily 100% for the benefit of the team. As we've all been screaming, you can't be revisionist now because we were all screaming that we wanted to see Jorginho in the tent yeah, and a striker. You're saying he's playing a worse player. You're saying he's playing no, a worse not player. No, I'm saying that. No, I'm not saying he's playing a worse player. I'm saying that his formation goes with saying he wants. Usually, he he prefers to have one, um, one fullback more defensive, one fullback more attacking. Byram can do both defensive and attacking, which is why I would have loved to see a run of consistent games of Byram on the left and Spence on the right, because Spence is more for going forward. Byram can do both. Archie is more defensive. So we never actually got to see that dynamic. And I think the whole, the whole point of saying well, Archie Gray must be a better right back than Spence or that people have had. I never got on board personally that Spence was all of that because unfortunately, when you put people on a pedestal, there's only one place for them to go and that's down. And we, everybody came into the, when as soon as we signed Spence, everybody was like, he's the best, he's amazing. He, did you see him at Forest? But we never got that. So we had expectations up here. He then came on. You said, oh, my God. You know, when he came on for those 20, was it the Sheffield Wednesday game that he came on for the last, like, 20 minutes? Yeah. So good, yeah. he, yeah, exactly. He was good. And then he got injured. So for the same reason that a lot of people have excused Cooper, have excused Bamford for the last few years, saying they've had injuries so they can't play at 100%. Spence has also had injuries. He's come into a new team. It's not his actual team. He's on loan. He wants to impress because guess what? He doesn't want to play for us. He wants to play in the Premier League. So he does want to play. And if if a manager wants, 
if a manager wants a certain player because he just feels comfortable, he feels comfortable having Ampadu on the pitch. So for as much as Gruev has done What's a good job... What's your point here, though, staff, Evie? What point? Are you saying well, that you, you, recognise he's a good player? No, I'm saying that we're creating this kind of Archie versus Spence for no reason. No one's At the end that. of the day... No, but you said, well, why is every you know? I told you Archie Gray is a better a better right back, and this, that, and the other. Well, yeah, but he's also a really good midfielder, and we're choosing to play a seventeen-year-old at right back. And you are an old guard protector, right? Archie Gray has his leads, he, you know, his family are leads. So therefore, he he's almost an old guard without actually being old or having played for the team because of his family background. You are protective of him more than you are any other player because of the fact What's that he is here? me. <laughs> because you do, you, you <laughs> love him. No, but I'm just I, saying that you... you the start. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> no, no, but you, I... you love Gray, right? And you defend him. And unfortunately, but, he but has been caught... To defend? No, but... He can't defend sometimes. He gets caught out on runs because, just like I said the other day, in the Premier League, people would go up our left because we had Furpo. Now people are doing the ball over the top to the right because Archie Gray can't make the runs back because he's he's he wants to be a midfielder and he's being asked to be a defender. I don't I don't so know if that's he, right though. But he, so we're he saying is. he's now running into midfield because he wants to be a midfielder and not listening to. But now we're putting balls in. I don't know what's going on here. Can I, can I just say something like? 20 seconds. The, the only the difference between Archie and a loan player is you at this level, you bring a loan player in obviously to be ready straight away, be effective. Archie is a young guy, he's going to develop that's part of it. He's our player. Jed Spence came in because of that profile to be ready and to play straight away. He didn't come here to develop as a player, he came here to get us back to the Premier League. So I guess there's less patience with loan players as well when they're not when they're not in the team or they're not performing at the level they expect them to do, the manager. So I think that's obviously down to it as well. Like same with Anthony. I'm sure he brought him in to push really hard the guys on the pitch. And he's clearly not doing that enough because he's not playing enough games. So a lone player is there to be an instant impact, you know, not to slowly come into it necessarily. That's not the ideal situation. Whereas Archie's our young player. He's come through our academy. So he's there to develop and he is doing that. But again, the argument is right. Is the argument's fine. Is Archie Gray better than Jed Spence? Is he doing better? That's that's perfectly fine. We're football fans. We can argue that as, as much as we like. But I think there's definitely less patience for someone that's coming on loan because they're, they're there for an the instant. Expectations, so I look it. And you paid yeah. a million quid to loan. And it was. Player, we were all. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievably. Absolutely. Yeah. So, just to clarify. <laughs> oh, no. Good luck with that one. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> last, last 10 minutes is blurred. I mean, maybe, maybe if you'd have come to me first, like you were going to, then I'd have been able to get my yeah, point yeah, originally. Yeah. But oh, we went oh, round oh. everywhere else first and then came to me. So maybe my point got a bit diluted <laughs> because of that. Me. I'd forget if I didn't jump in. I'd forget what <laughs> <laughs> On a level, though, yes, I, I am um, um, uh, an old guard apologist, if, if, if you like to say. And yes, I think every football fan, regardless, wants to protect and um, praise uh, the up and coming youth players that are from your club more than most. Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't, I don't uh, hide away from that fact. But in the same thing, I used to say that when people used to praise Bailey Peacock Farrell, and a lot of people would say, "Oh, he's amazing, he's great." Well, he was shit, but because he come through the acad academy, Napoleon, you know. Uh, Don Polion, yeah, it's another one. Yeah, yeah, it is what it I is. loved him. Yeah. He, was, he was well good on FIFA in back in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. But listen, Bipolar Joe is what it is. Spence isn't a Leeds United player anymore. Gray is. And I think there's this... The frustrating thing for me when it comes to Gray and him playing at right back, where he's played for England, by the way. So other other coaches have have seen him and felt that he could do a job at right back for his national side. Everyone used to say this about Shackleton, but he's a midfielder. He's a midfielder. He's a midfielder. He's probably not. He's probably better at right back. Um, the, my my, my point yeah, is was. exactly yeah. Calvin was a you know used to play further forward, was scoring goals under Christensen. Yelza came in and went, you're a number six. He went, what? 
and now he plays for England and went to City as a number six. So everyone that wants to say he's a centre midfielder, da, 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 there's no... Yes, he may go on to play there. At the end of the day, Trent Alexander-Arnold, guess what, folks? He was a midfielder. Klopp put him at right back. Zinchenko is a midfielder. Pep Guardiola and, and Arteta put him at left back. So there's nothing to say that in the future... Archie Gray might be seen as someone who can play in an inverted fullback role, but everyone straight away wants to say, but he's a midfielder, he's a centre midfielder. What are you on about? He's a midfielder. I still stand by the notion that Archie Gray, by a few performances here and there, has been almost faultless. Almost faultless. And I don't understand why there is this, this outcry, this is mine, this outcry from the Leeds United fans that Spence has been allowed to go back. That's what I don't understand. Because I don't know what we've seen of Spence. That's my point. I agree. I agree. Mm. I don't get the reaction. I, like, I mean, whatever we've said, positively or negatively, about Spence, I still don't get the reaction. The reaction's... Well, he's barely kicked the ball for us this year. He hasn't had an impact on the season. We haven't lost anything. But I'm going back outside of a square peg for a square hole, which, again... If we're doing this, I'm assuming there's something else lined up ready to go. I'm assuming we're not cancelling his loan now and have nothing ready. And I would also assume they're using it now because they've got the cup game on Sunday and they don't have a league match till next week. That gives them a bit of a buffer to get a player in and get him up to speed, at least with the shape. So I would assume there's something positive coming after this. It's, again, and I'd say this for Archie as well. I think Archie's been fine at right back as well. I think he's been fine. I don't think anybody outside of Byram early stores in the season when he was really fit I don't think any of our fullbacks have really set the league on fire this year, but they haven't done nothing wrong either. They've just been fine. If we can get a better one, great. If that frees up Archie to be the box-to-box eight we need, great, let's do that. If that's what why Jed Spence is going back, no problem, fine. I think the reaction is probably a little bit over the top, full stop. I think people are shouting the clouds now because we're so used to this happening under the previous ownership that somebody would leave and you're like, oh, well, now we're fucked. Yeah, we now we've got nothing here. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case here, and I would always... Before you open your front door and start screaming at a cloud, take a second, relax. And I'm guilty of this as well. But in this situation, like, relax, see what's said tomorrow, see what happens tomorrow, and then see where we are. Then, nothing. We've got a game against Peter at the weekend. It wasn't a first choice team going out against them anyway. We've got time. It's not the end of the world. That's another thing. One thing. Just come. Go on, Evie. You go first. Go on. One thing I would say is that I, I'm not saying I don't like Gray at right back. I'm not saying he can't do a job at right back. I don't want anybody to think that I'm bashing a 17-year-old for, for doing a really good job in an incredibly tough league. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that I think that his skills could be utilised better in the midfield. Yeah. Have we got any goals in that midfield? I think Archie Gray gives us goals in that midfield if you allow him to progress and if you allow him to have a good run of games playing in his more than right back position. Not saying yeah, it has yeah. to be his full time position, but I do think that we are lacking that. We have to walk the ball into the into the box in order to get a goal and. Archie's not afraid to do that. But the more you take him out of that position, the more he then doesn't necessarily feel that he has the right to use his natural instincts and take a shot. He has scored so many goals in the under-21s from outside of the box. So we should be we should be pushing for his progression in, in all areas of the pitch, whether that's at right back or whether that's in midfield. But it's side before self. And therefore, I feel his self could be utilised to provide a better chance for the team, for the side, to be promoted by getting those goals from midfield. That's that's you know my only I'm... that's that's my only kind of reason as to why I'm not saying Archie Gray has done a bad job because for 17, the amount of pressure that must be on all of those players because we have an incredibly young, inexperienced with this sort of expectation team that yeah. he's doing a brilliant job. I'm not bashing him. I'm just saying mm. we need somebody to be able to be waiting in the wing to give him a, a cuddle and say, you know what, lad, I've got you. I'll do it from here. And I, we I don't have know, that right now. Just, sorry, I, think make, on, I think the point that he's making is 100% valid. And I think the point is really, really simple. If we can put square pegs in square holes, let's put square pegs in square holes. You know, if we can get a midfielder yeah. back in midfield and get right back, a specialist right back at right back, let's go and do that because we'll be better for it. Is Archie good at right back? Yeah, he's fine. He's a kid. 
you can get a better one there, great. Get him back in midfield where he can play. Same with the Rutter and Piro argument. Same with Sam Byram on the left. Yeah. If you can get natural players in their natural positions, you'll be better off. So, I mean, that that I think that's as simple as it is. Mm. You know, Far come out just for a different player. And that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I, can I, do, do, do you know my only point with that, though? The two the two midfielders that we have, mm. and, and maybe you can, and maybe Lockie and uh, Jer can answer this better, better for me. Like, the two midfielders that we have in, in terms of, Ampadu and, and um, Kamara, are they there to get goals? Where would Spence play? He would, he would definitely. Play. Jeez. He would, definitely are they there to get goals? Do you know what I mean? No. But where would no. Gray fit in that then to go get goals? If you look at the way he plays it currently, he plays with two city midfielders as a as an as orthodox double pivot, right? They, they're two players, their job yeah. is to fill the gaps to the fullbacks when they bomb forward. That's where you get your way from, right? That's that's the basics of, of Farka's system. <clears throat> Kamara does get Jordi, forward. Just one sec. If your whole thing is from fucking football manager, Jesus then bro, Christ. please stop. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> Go on, Joe. Back. Right. Yeah. So there are two <laughs> currently the two players are there to do a defensive job. But in recent weeks, we've seen, especially in the games where teams have played low blocks against us, we've seen Kamara pop up in the box. We've seen Ampadu pop up in the box. And they're not finishers. They're not. They're not players to yeah, score yeah. goals. I mean, Ethan Ampadu, has he got any goals in his career? Maybe one, two, handful. Kamara does a good job, doesn't score a huge amount of goals, creates stuff, not a massive goal score. Having a player in there that can do the same job as the, one of those two, but also chip in with a finish as well, is a benefit to the team. You know, especially in the games where the double pivot's not working anymore, or you're so in control of the game, you don't need the second player. You, you need to, when he goes to his 3 5 2, you know, when you get to that, having a player that can be a bit more dynamic. It's a benefit, especially if somebody can shoot from distance, which Archie has done the past, as, as Evie's already said. So he would go in there as an alternative, but it would be a give out, well, who are you playing against and what are you trying to do? And that's the change. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, no. well, I'm, I'm just, while we've been talking there, I've just been looking at Archie Gray's goal scoring history. He's only ever scored eight goals since the under 18s, ever, in mm. any league. Mm. Well, but from so field, like, I, I, yeah, I, I think. That goal scoring uh, record in the 21s as a midfielder. Mm-hmm. You got, uh, got two in the under twenty ones. Yeah, one season. In I think. I think. Games, yeah. I think as as a profile, um, if talking about goal scoring, we, we need. <laughs> I think he sort of put that argument in the bin there, Lucas. I can't lie to you. Go on. Sorry, yeah, I'm saying, I think. Goal, I think mate. it's a different profile. I think it's an. I think it's a new player we need if we're talking about. It. None of them really are known for that, are they? You know, yeah, there's no. a lot of midfielders out there who are. So it's a different profile for me. It's back to that same conversation about getting the players in the Farka ones for the system. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago after we, we lost to um who was it? Not West Brom, game before. Preston. 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 Thank you. It blanked it completely. Thanks for that. Um against Preston, we we had said it about um needing different types of players. And if it wasn't the players, it was Farka. And if it wasn't Farka, it was the players, but it had to be one or the other. And if if the players weren't good enough to play in Farka's system or play Farka's system effectively the way he wants to play it, then Leeds need to get different players. And it looks like that's possibly what they're trying to do now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, right, we had that mail piece. Five loans, um, uh, spots available. That's two domestically, three abroad, I think. Whether or not, because Spence has gone back now, that means we've got three domestically. So that, that number could have increased. Mm. And I, I, I have to agree with Evie. Um, I think it will be a lot more busier than what I know shocked right it'll be a lot more busier than what Farker initially said and when he says we'll have a quiet window I think he's saying that in response to what we had in the summer which if we're being honest that was loud you know what I mean so anything anything less than that is considered quiet so uh, Evie how how many Evie do you think we were likely to get having you know seen bits and bats over the last 24 48 hours and we've with Spence going back how, how many do you think are likely five do you think we will go out and activate five yeah i think we'll be busy because someone think, someone mess it go on i think we'll get left back right back center back 10 and nine well that'd be nice i th- I, I, th- nice. I think i think with the noises that are coming out I think there's a lot of cloak and dagger when it comes to the 49ers. They they do things yeah. in public when they're doing things behind the scenes. 
you know in you know you can look back at what they did during the summer when they came out and did articles in the mail when they did the interviews on um on the Leeds podcast and things like that all that was going on we had then had three signings the following week after they did that so for me they they for as much as they do their business behind the scenes yeah. they they keep everything you know they keep you distracted with one hand it's like they're kind of magicians you know keeping you distracted with one side of things while they're doing something with the other hand kind of thing so for me I think that's why all of this news about the extension and obviously I know that the metro links and things have been going on you know um for for quite a while but there just seems to all of a sudden when there's a transfer window why do we need to know about that right now well I think the reason why we know about it is because they're doing things behind the scene just like we didn't see Jed Spence departure come in and then wham he's gone for me yeah. they don't if we don't get rid of Nonto then we don't sell we don't get rid of Spence that there's a reason you know if they wanted to keep hold of him they would yeah, just they have kept off. hold of him for yeah. so for me there's a reason they've not just you know i know it's ptsd again but it's not radrazani when we don't have victor Arta. Yeah. we're not just getting rid of people and then you know buying a, a winger to play goalkeeper or something you know like we're going to get the actual players that we need rather mm -hmm. than people in summer it was different this transfer window we don't have anybody that has to go out on loan because there's a daft clause in their contract yeah. so yeah 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 no i think that's uh, I, I think that's fair i do i do think we'll be um we'll be pretty active as well i have to agree with you luke do you do, do you go along the same lines i think burnley went up with six loans they yeah i, I don't loans. think i don't think I think we will use uh, the loan market. I mean, again, all speculation. Eh? But I, I still fancy to make us one or two permanent signings in this window. Uh, I didn't think so before. Um, but the more and more I see murmurs and, and, and whispers, um, the lad from Hammerby, for instance, wouldn't be coming on loan, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, I, I, st I still see us signing. Uh, I still see Cresswell going. I still see Ailing going out and potentially Nonto. If that happens, I think we'll bring five in. Um, if not, if if one of those minus one off for each for each, that doesn't, I think. But I certainly think we'll be looking at bringing in a creative 10, um, a left or a right back, preferably a left back for me because I think we've got enough cover at right back, even if Luke does go with Shaq, Ailing, and Gray. Um, and... Yeah, as I say, if Nonto goes, a like for like replacement of some sort um, might be alone. So, yeah, between four and five for me, realistically, I think, but a couple of permanent signings in there. Yeah, it'd be nice. Joe, what do we need? Left what back. Would constitute, right back. What would constitute a, a, a great window for you? Left back, right back, creative 10. I would argue possibly a right-sided centre-back as a backup, just in case, because he clearly doesn't fancy Creswell there. And I don't want to see Stroke playing there um, in case anything happens to, to Rodon. Um, and I think possibly some cover on the bench, because I don't think he, I, I don't believe Farka trusts that bench completely. I think there are certain players he does, but I think when he looks back at the entire squad, I think there's players on that bench that he would rather not have there. You know? Yeah. So I think maybe um, one permanent and three loans, but I, I would be nervous about a ton of loans given that we're not top of the division. You know, we are still trying to scrap to get into that top two. I think if we were top two and you're bringing players in to get to the Premier League, you're coming in on a crest of a wave. You've got players coming in, you're expecting to come in, do a job, get promoted, stay playing the Premier League next year. You. I think when you're outside the Premier the, the automatic two, and if you're competing with those two teams, you might lose out. I was just going to say, I think the difficulty we've got in the law market is that anybody in and around us are going to be after the similar similar players, certainly yeah. domestically. Yeah. We've got to be smart. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, Lockie, Connor Roberts has been linked from Burnley, obviously a Welsh international as well, which would um, suit with Daniel Farker's remit. Um, would that yeah. be someone you would you would like um, at Rowling? I mean, but by saying the name, by what I you know, remember from him, yeah. But after obviously having mm. people looking to him, but um, yeah, he's a good player. He was excellent last year in the championship. One, he was unbelievable, mm. like ten goals and assists, I think, something like that. So, mm. yeah, I think what I was going to say though, the thing with loans is it's going to be difficult for us because, yeah, as Luke said, obviously everyone else around us will be looking at that caliber of player, and that yeah. caliber of player wants to play every week. So it might be the same situation 
that Jed saw himself, himself in is that caliber wants to play every week. So if we want to bring in, for example, a midfielder, there's no guarantee he's going to play every week. Look, if he's a central midfielder, he's not playing at all behind Kamara or Ampadu, is he? Four backs, that position where you could argue there is a space to play every week. Centre back, no one's going to play every week. Even any of the front four, it's difficult to say to them players that are high calibre, you're going to play every week. And that's what they'll want. So I think loans are going to be difficult. I honestly think we'll only get one or two max for loans and maybe maybe one permanent, and that's the centre back. It's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. That's what it is, in goings and outgoings. Um, definitely not quiet, I don't think, anyway, but definitely quiet by the summer standards. Um, great, great chat tonight. I um, want to thank you all for, for coming on as well and everyone in the chat. We've had over 1,100 people, which at this time of night is absolutely insane. So if you haven't already, smash a like on the video. Check out Jer at Leeds United, The View. Lockie at Lockie Leeds. Check out Luke over on Auto Know Better and EV coming soon, I believe. Still, yeah. Yeah, watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> um, listen, thanks as always for watching the Just Joe Football Show. Um, and we will leave it there. Have a nice evening. And I, oh, tomorrow, um, we'll obviously have press conference reaction, which is going to be an interesting one because everyone's going to ask him about Spence. Um, after that, at four o'clock, I've got Ben Jacobs coming on. So Ben Jacobs is going to be talking through transfers and Leeds United. And then 10 o'clock, we've got um, the return of the scouting report with Lockie and Andrea. So they've been... Can I just say, Joe? Yes. Is, we're doing, we're doing a, a... Can I say full what backs, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Full uh, backs, yeah. Finding a left back is impossible. So hard. I, I feel I feel for Arthur now, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever feel for that man. Don't ever feel for that man. <laughs> to be fair, a, is he having a free transfer now? <laughs> <laughs> it's so difficult, honestly. Yeah, I've <laughs> been just them two going. Not that Jed Spence. Room. He could. Play like that. <laughs> yeah, he's a decent player. To be fair, isn't he? yeah, yeah. Imagine. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, we we, we shall see. Um, yeah. Listen, do you know what? I've had some super chats in that I've forgotten miss, so let me just go through these. Lord Shergar says, um, "Bill Pascal Coops for post star back for here we go." Uh, BP <laughs> says, "Archie keeps his place. Surely he's been quality man after my own heart." BP and big up to Colin Kerwin as well says, "Get toasty in here." Surely there's going to be a reason for giving Spence back. Hopefully we're in for a right or left back. Any thoughts on anyone that could back up Archie as good as he has been? Watch this space tomorrow evening, Colin. There should be some names there. And then I think we got this one in, but it says Spence long cancelled and Jura shaved. I don't know what's real anymore. <laughs> Crazy times. Um, yeah, and I think we'll leave it there. Thanks always for watching, folks. Enjoy your evening. 